Hi there, my name is Valur and I'm your friend in Reykjavik. And we do all kinds of walking tours and experience here in Reykjavik. Uh, beer tours, food tours, a folklore and, uh, and a started walking tour. And uh, today we're going to uh, talk about the Christmas beer traditions here in Iceland. And this is my friend here, Sven. Hey! And uh, he is, a, you know, if I consider myself a master in, 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 in beer studies here in Iceland, mm. then he's the doctor. <laughs> uh, he has been a beer school teacher here for 12 years. Uh, we're really used to telling people about the Icelandic beers and uh, alcohol. And uh, he even does online uh, tours for people, like groups or, or companies uh, where he talks about beer and uh, in general. So uh, I got him here to, to talk about the Christmas beers. And uh, we're going to talk about the history uh, because, you know, we have quite a, a lot of Christmas beers here. Uh, before this Christmas, there were about 100 uh, different types of, of Christmas beers <laughs> released. Uh, all the small microbreweries release a Christmas beer before. Which is a record uh, by capita. Yeah, right. per capita, of course. <laughs> Everything is per capita here in Iceland. Being so few, it's very easy for us to be the best in many things per capita. And of course, you know, consuming beer and uh, releasing beer is one of those. And, uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please drop them on a comment. We will try to keep up and uh, answer some questions. But uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of a history of the Christmas beer. So, so what is a Christmas beer, Sven? Uh, it's a beer uh, you drink around Christmas. Ah, thank you. Next, next <laughs> question. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, the Christmas beer tradition is, is, um, is uh, I mean, there are, uh, sometimes Icelanders, they want to be a part of Scandinavia and sometimes they want to be this Iceland, whether it suits them or not. When it yeah. comes to beer, it's, it's the Scandinavia coalition is, is better for us. Yeah. Um, because uh, the, you know, the tradi uh, traditional Christmas beers is something that we can claim. In Scandinavia because uh, while the rest of Europe maybe they wanted to have um, good food on Christmas and then they were drinking their own stuff their burgundies and beers and ales and whatever mm -hmm. but we wanted a special drink during Christmas we wanted a better drink during Christmas so we made special beers special ales and all kinds of stuff uh, during Christmas so uh, while the history the, the, the big history of, of, of beer is of course really 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 old and i could go here for about three or four hours uh starting in 50,000 bc and uh, we're not going to do that uh, uh but the christmas beers they came along um um pretty early but uh, the first one i want to talk about is well this i guess this is going to be the only non-icelandic beer we're going to talk about uh this is tubok julebruk uh, this is uh this became like uh, a foundation like a mom for the rest of uh, the Christmas beers in the last century when they started because uh, this beer and let's just open up and have some this is a this is a fine beer to start off with beautiful thought, red thought, color thought you would never do that yeah sorry I was waiting uh, we'll just have one uh, but we have more so yeah so this is a Tuberk Hjulbrik you see the color in uh, it's yeah. nice cheers mate Skalk and thank, yeah, thank you for uh, letting me be here with uh, with my friend and your friend and, and Reykjavik. Yeah, I got that right, right? Yeah, all right. Well, and then the question kind of pops up. Well, because a lot of people, they uh, associate this with the Christmas beer. It's, uh, it's, it's a lager beer that is uh, has like um, crystal malt, has that, you know, that reddish color and that caramel, you know, taste and feel. Mm -hmm. and but why, why was it? Why was that uh, the first one? Who decided this would be a Christmas beer? Well, these guys decided. Uh, the Carlsberg people that make Tuborg in, in, in Denmark. They decided that we have to make a Christmas beer, uh, you know, special Christmas beer for us. Because the Scandinavian tradition and the Icelandic tradition, you know, wants a special Christmas beer. So they, they decided to make this one. And why did they make it like this? Yes, it was to pair the beer with their food and Danish Christmas food is salted and smoked um, pig or lamb or usually pig and this kind of fits with it but it's kind of funny that the first Christmas beer is about uh, beer and food pairing because that's actually what I'm doing today I'm, I'm you know my uh, seminars in Reykjavik are about um, uh, food and, and, and beer tasting together so that's that's the beginning beginning of it 
Mm -hmm. So they decided this should be our Christmas beer. And uh, this became like a model for the rest of them. So the first Christmas beer that came like in Iceland uh, after we legalized beer in 89. Yeah, another big story. And, uh, you know, longer story. <laughs> the longer story. Then basically all of them and were a you know, different type of this. And still, like, I would consider maybe one third mm -hmm. is still um, like this. Yeah, we're, we, we like our um, like multi beers, darker beers. Uh, and like Sven was um, explaining, uh, we uh, we uh, had the similar food traditions like the Danes. So we are uh, the glazed uh, smoked ham that we have here for Christmas uh, Christmas Eve dinner. This is perfect for that. And also the uh, smoked leg of lamb that we have for Christmas and uh, day dinner. So this is a perfect uh, drink to have with that. So you know, our, our regular, of course, drink with that is Jola Earth or Christmas Ale. A non-alcoholic uh, mix of uh, orange soda called apelsin and malt, and that's like the Christmas drink that we are used to when you're when you're uh, growing up, and then you you know eventually go for this Christmas ales or Christmas beers. The the, the funny thing is that um, I don't know if many people realize what is the by far the biggest Christmas beer in the world, because okay this is this is the the one the Danes made and, and we have been kind of following. And when we're talking about Scandinavian traditions, well, there were uh, Norwegian immigrants in Canada that uh, that really needed uh, Christmas beers because being Scandinavian, wanting Christmas stuff, right? So uh, uh, they were, uh, you know, moaning and pleading that uh, to have something to, you know, special to drink on Christmas. And the Artois uh, Brewery had uh, had uh, some uh, yeah, had a brewery in, in Canada, and they made this Stella Artois. Stella means a star. At being a Christmas, the, the Christmas star. So this is this is the Christmas beer they made for the Norwegians. So they didn't think it like the Danes about you know, pairing it with food. It's just a light crisp lager, and it has done you know uh, rather well ever, ever since. So this is what we uh, this is what we drink when we go to like you know Liverpool and watch them win games and stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't connect this with, of course, Christmas no, beers no, because, no. because I like my, um, you know, I'm raised with the maltiness. But it's a funny thing that, you know, Stella, the one of the most popular beers in probably in the world, yeah. is a, originally a Christmas beer. And it's all thanks to the Norwegians. Uh, you know, they threaten people. You know, they threaten to make friends in Canada. They say, oh, "All right, we'll give you beer. Uh, sorry, you know, don't. You know, just whatever. We'll do whatever you want." So yeah, but. In Iceland, uh, we could we could uh, say uh, with almost certainty that beer was our first um, Christmas drink. Mm -hmm. Because when the settlers came here in 18, uh, 874, we were uh, we were growing barley. We had uh, uh, the people that went to, came to Reykjavik. There was a decent place there to uh, grow barley, so we were making beer then. Yeah, and it was a really important uh, thing because. Uh, in, for example, in Norway, it was a tradition that you should always brew beer before Christmas because uh, uh, the Norwegian king at the time that was kind of like a demand of his that he, one of his uh, uh, privileges was that he could ride uh, amongst his people during Christmas and you would always have a feast where, he, where if you would stop at the farm there would always be uh, available right. beer. Yeah, yeah, there would <laughs> always be beer. An open bar. An uh, open bar. Yeah. <laughs> And also, uh, remember, uh, that's a, one of the fun uh, things, uh, you know, at the time, beer was a fresh product. You needed to consume it once it was ready. You, uh, you didn't want anything to go to waste. So, of course, uh, that, the feast that, uh, that were held there, they would stand for maybe a week. You, you would yeah, it, just, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was only good for maybe four days. And the, the funny thing is, it was getting stronger. Uh, it, was, it was ready on day one. And then it got stronger and stronger and stronger, and then and then it was ruined. And uh, maybe this is the tradition. Uh, now is the second of Christmas, uh, so it's like the fourth day of Christmas for uh, for, for, uh, for us in Iceland. So yeah. and that's uh, that's like the day we we drink, <laughs> traditionally drink and get get maybe wasted. At least when we were young, uh, he was a bit younger. Uh, there was always a, like a dance or uh, uh, you know some activities uh, were balls or whatever you call them. Yeah, uh, on, 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 uh, on boxing boxing on, day. On or, boxing day. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a time we went out and, and partied. Mm -hmm. And but it's true about the Norwegians. Uh, in the 13th century, they had a law in uh, in Norway stating 
that it was illegal not to have beer on Christmas. <laughs> I love that law. And then the Icelanders, so they took it a bit further. Next century, um, there was a law in Iceland. They, they added to it. It was like punishable if you did not have beer on Christmas. Okay. So you were, you were, you were punished. Yeah, they, you know, not that, do you have a beer in there? No, can So, uh, yeah. So we took it seriously. But, uh, yeah, like, like what I was saying, we were making um, beers around um, special events on Althingi and the Christmas. So uh, it, this was something we made for Christmas and I, drank it. it. Re oh. Remember Christmas, of course, uh, if we go up a bit back, it was a midwinter festival. We were celebrating that we were halfway through the horrible long winter. So... Uh, so it was a tradition to have a feast and, and drink a little bit and, and okay we just have halfway we are halfway there you know we have just a couple of months and yes. then we're then we're through so so we are actually uh, a lot of us are, are heathens in iceland so uh, we can uh, really support and celebrate christmas being heathen because uh, the christmas came before christianity in this country so, let's, let, let's not go into religious matters okay that's no, a, that's, no, a, that's, no, that's, a, not that's another that. life yeah, event all right. <laughs> okay cool uh yeah so and, and then the, this tradition that you were talking about the malt beers and uh, malt uh, and, and the orange stuff uh we have been crazy about um uh you know special malt beers and uh, last century like uh, like it's we know it's a, a long story but uh for a long while we uh, alcohol was banned even uh, for 76 years you could buy even strong alcohol and not beer and mm -hmm. usually when when I got, got tours, uh, when I was doing beer school for foreigners, and I was telling them true stories mm -hmm. about this, they like they looked at it. Uh, they maybe had you know gone be the day before on a tour, and someone told them that we were sleeping with trolls or some stupid shit. And then they, then they, we told them not you know, my tour. <laughs> no, 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 never, never. And then we told them like, yeah, you know, seventy-six years, you could buy vodka and brennevin and whiskey, but not beer. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure, uh, that's a good one there. And then we told them about the but, but it's, so it's a true story. It's a true story. From, true story. from it's, 1915 it's to 1989, 74 years, no yeah. beer was uh, beer was banned here, but you could drink vodka and you could drink 90 percent uh, <laughs> yes. spirit. But, yeah, not not the beer. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's a longer story for another live event, maybe. Yes, yes. yes. We have to we have to go back to uh, you know, and, and you know, we might have we might have to have like a label on, you know, on the on the on the on the screen true story true story true story <laughs> because people you know i'm not sure if they believe it don't let the truth ruin a good no. story no don't but actually <laughs> this one is true <laughs> yeah so 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 uh show them the next beer i'm gonna kick some of the these uh, spammers that I, I can see on the feed I'm, oh, you know, they hurt. there are always some some uh, people trying to click uh, let you click on some links please don't click on any links just ignore those fools and uh, yeah let's carry on yes well uh this next one here is uh it's debatable whether it's uh, really it's, it's not a fancy beer but it's like uh, the malt thing uh, Valo talked about, uh, the malt mix with, with the orange uh, soda, uh, malt and apicine. That, that, that has been our uh, Christmas drink for about, you know, almost, uh, almost 100 years. And uh, then they came out with malt julabjur, which means uh, malt uh, Christmas beer, right? And uh, what it is, it's, it's basically malt, uh, the old malt ale, non-alcohol malt ale, that is, has been allowed to ferment and uh, get stronger so it's now it's basically a beer and uh it is quite it's quite dangerous in many ways because it tastes almost like just the regular malt and and uh maybe you realize this but uh, when it comes to ales and lagers those two different types the ales they carry alcohol so much better uh, you can have really strong ales and you can hardly you know feel any alcohol taste but the lighter so they always they always come through that so skull skull so this is this is skull skull so yeah that's pretty good this is very similar like you know we talked about earlier that the christmas ale yola the non-alcohol thing this is basically a malt that we put in the christmas ale just uh with alcohol in it so now 5.6 percent abv so um well uh, actually this has kind of uh, helped my christmas a uh, lot for the past few years because uh when this came out like uh, six years ago i thought to myself well i have to mix this with orange uh, soda you know of course of course to find out if it if it matches um 
our original recipe. And I didn't dare to do it though, because uh, I thought it would maybe ruin this. This is a holy taste for us. This is like a, this is a taste that has to be balanced. But next year, uh, we had some time, the beer school teachers. So we did some experiments and we found out that two thirds of uh, this Christmas beer and one third of the orange soda would make the perfect blend. And I'm telling you, ever since, my Christmas has been so smooth. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so relaxed with the, the sauce. He's, he's, his two children just you know, buzzing yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, if the children get agitated, just give them some of this blend and they'll just fall right asleep. It's, it's wonderful. Keep your children drunk at Christmas. Uh, and you know, when they wake up with a headache, they might go, oh, and then you go like, you shouldn't have eaten so much candy last night. And you know, they will never know. So, uh, you know, I want to teach you something also. So. Do you do that? Icelandic parenting 101. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, I would not go for a couple of these, uh, these malt beers because uh, uh, it lacks a little bit of flavor for me. It, it, it just reminds me of malt and, and you know, is, ma is, maybe, is, maybe it's a mix, but... It's, it's, a, it's a mixer for me. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a complicated beer, really. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, they sell a lot of it uh, on Christmas, and they seem to like it. And so, uh, you know, is this a big seller in, in the yeah? It, local? It, 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 so we have these state-run alcohol stores here. You can't buy, you can't go to the grocery stores and buy beer not. or wine or anything like that. You need to go to a state-run alcohol stores uh, that are all over, and they provide pretty good service. But uh, so this malt, uh, you need to buy it from them as it contains alcohol, and uh, so. It sells, so, uh, you know, like, do they and have yeah, the same I'm, number? I'm, yeah, because we have like uh, uh, the beers we're going to check out next. Uh, I mean, we're going to get near to the newer version, the microbrewery versions. But this probably, uh, because there are still, <laughs> uh, despite COVID, there are a lot of old people around. And uh, sorry, uh, but... <laughs> But still, uh, you know, this is you, a, you had to go there. <laughs> yeah, this is a familiar. Uh, this is a familiar. Just, just to explain, we uh, we Icelanders <laughs> tend to have a little bit of dark humor. Just after uh, one sip of uh, after one sip of uh, uh, yeah. So this this is gonna uh, you know this is gonna go. People are gonna connect to this. Uh, you know, it's just like an old taste. This is not for the uh, for the micro uh, beer people. So it's it still sells, but you know, let's find out what what happens next year. So. Yeah, I'm not a big favorite, uh, no, no. as I said. Uh, it's a, uh, I, I like a, I like some, uh, a little bit more flavor, a little bit more tones. And as as Sven was explaining, we're we're moving into that, uh, into the, that genre. Yeah. And the thing is that uh, while uh, one of the Christmas beers, first Christmas beers, not only here, but uh, yeah, in Denmark also and and, and Scandinavia. Uh, the first Christmas beers were, you know, pretty much uh, some kind of version of, of, of this, but uh, with a micro beer, uh, um, you know, explosion really uh, started in, uh, in 2006, seven really in Europe. Uh, all bets were off, and this is a, this is a very pivot, pivotal moment in, in in beer history because before this, uh, basically uh, the beer consumption in the world was 95 percent were you know middle-aged guys like us. Drinking one type of lager beer. Mm -hmm. We were Stella persons or we were Kalsberg persons and uh, that was just it. And uh, then this this revolution really, it starts in America because we tend to make fun of America when it comes to beer, you know, all the light beers and stuff like that. But actually they are the reason uh, that uh, that um, the beer is, is getting cool again, is, is hip again, mm -hmm. because uh, these kids in Boston and, and Columbus, uh, Ohio and, you know, and the East Coast also, they started making, uh, they started these microbreweries because they had enough of the light beers. Mm -hmm. so, and these guys. Do you know what we called American beer before the beer revolution? You know, can you guess? It's like making love in a canoe. Yes. It's fucking close to water. Yes, pretty much. Uh, and kind of still is. But, still. but the, things, uh, the, the thing is that these kids, they did not have the traditions like we do in Europe. Because in Europe, we want to be hip and cool, but we have our traditions. You're gonna eat Camembert cheese when you're in that area. You're gonna eat, you know, you're gonna drink this beer when you're in this area. So we are, we want traditions. We eat Hunkikut, we eat, you know, we drink malt. But these kids, they just had this piss beer and they said, well, 
let's do whatever. And that, that, mm. then this is when we got the IPAs back and the sour beers back and the white hails back and mm. all these different kinds of beers. In Germany, for example, there's a, like a Reinheitsgebote. Uh, Reinheitsgebote. Yeah. Reinheitsgebote. And uh, yeah, so, so it's, you need just uh, three uh, ingredients to the beer and that, that's it. You shouldn't mix anything else. And yeah. that, that's one of the beauties of the microbreweries, uh, you know, trying everything out. You know, mixing uh, it, everything it was out. a law in Germany, actually. It was dated, uh, it was set in 1525 and it was law until 1979. 1970, it was the law in Germany for 400 years. It survived a couple of wars. Okay. <laughs> and you, you, if, if you would do this in the 30s, <laughs> so no, you could not do that. Uh, so, so, so now, and but the thing is, and uh, but you know, talking about Germany, yeah, well, uh, in, in Hanover, the mayor of Hanover, he, he stated that Michael was, <laughs> yeah, that's his name. he was just laughing it off, and he said, There are 200. Uh, places in Hanover making beer and that's not no micro stuff shit right mm -hmm. they were all making the same beer but they didn't think that of, of, because it, it was a completely different idea and mm -hmm. then in 2007 uh, both uh, Brewdog start and Mikkeler start mm -hmm. and Mikkeler he kind of uh, re revolutionized the whole idea of brewing by uh, Brewing with others, sharing recipes, because before it was it was my recipe. Is those this. those two breweries? Uh, they are both situated in Denmark, right? Uh, uh, Brewdog is in Scotland. And, yeah, uh, Brewdog is Scotland. Yeah, and, 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 and Mikkeler is, is is Danish, and yeah. he has a brother uh, that has an evil twin brewery, and, yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> they are like the Oasis brothers of beer. <laughs> they cannot be at the same place at the same time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it became uh, it is it's like the new brewers today are more like hippies. They're like sharing stuff and brewing together. It's all cool and taking different types of you know beers and mixing them. Yeah, it's great. And nobody wants to admit if it's bad. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's you know that's, that's that's basically it. And so and, and now even after the microbrew uh, revolution, we are getting we are getting uh, even more requests and uh, markets are open. And the next beer is gonna fit right into that because when. Uh, when I was teaching beer school, Christmas beer school, when I was talking about Christmas beers, like, you know, for the past 12 years, I'd, I, I always stated that I could sum up Christmas beer in one word. More. More alcohol, more taste, more spice, more color, more of everything. But the times are changing, like Dylan said. So, now we have a beer. It was actually lighter than usual so we have we have more uh we have more um, demand for lighter versions of beer and even non-alcoholic beer is, is getting more popular so uh, and, and and what they do here in iceland in, in many various ways we're going to look at it's, it's quite fun actually it's uh now they have a white ale white ale has become very uh, popular and uh, i recommend white ale with uh, with food and uh, lobster for instance for example the instick uh, white ale yeah, that yeah. you can get in the states and uh, in most countries in europe uh, it's a great great beer be beautiful drink so so what do they do uh the white ale has become big, uh, became kind of a ph phenomenon in iceland so they want to christmas uh, the, the christmas ice christmas ice that's a new word christmas ice christmas ice uh the different beers so what what do they do they put caramel in it which is kind of uh, Christmassy, yeah, this, this stuff. And mandarin, was it clementine? Clementine. Or the, clementine, yeah. the, the small uh, uh, oranges. Mm. So for us, that's a very Christmassy thing. So, uh, so uh, they uh, made uh, a light version beer, light beer, light ale beer, it's an ale, with some Christmassy things. So, so very light, light color. The thing is, uh, the first thing we might notice is this, well, while Valor is drinking, is that it's not completely filtered. And you, today we know that it's a good thing. Before we thought if everything was kind of cloudy, it was a bad thing. We know now if it's, if it's cloudy, it means it's more flavor because a lot of the character and flavor and fullness goes out of beers when it's completely filtered. Scotch, scotch. So it's different. It's not Ulebrück. It's not malt. Not my type of beer. No, it's a. But my, my girlfriend would probably and uh, my wife would probably like and, this. And your girlfriend. <laughs> and my girlfriend. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> sure. uh, is this life? Well, yeah, yeah, it's life. But uh, okay. but the, but the thing is, you know, it's very light. 
Freudian it's, slip. Uh, but for me, it's, this could be a summer beer because they, one of the, the what I have been doing with with the light uh, uh, white hails is and, and some fruitiness to them. So for me, uh, big big beer like this, cold on a sunny day, that will work for me. Uh, for me, this is a, this is going to be this is quenching beer. If you're thirsty, white hails are pretty good. Yeah, but uh, the notes of caramel and uh, the. I don't. I feel. I feel like it's a mixed bag. I would. I wouldn't drink this in a summer day even. Uh, Walter was asking uh, if uh, if there's a special factory, a microbrewery, just doing the Christmas beers. No, it's all over Iceland. All the small microbreweries situated like in the south, to the east, to the north, they are all doing their own versions of, of the, these Christmas beers. Uh, so yeah. So we have maybe. What do you think are how many microbreweries release the beer this uh, this season? Maybe uh, 30? 30, 20? 30 something. Now, the thing is that uh, since we have the monopoly in Iceland, um, uh, then uh, this is and uh, the rules are pretty uh, the, the rules are pretty uh, you know uh, strange when it comes to bringing new beer into the market, because uh, if you bring a new beer like a new lager beer or something, uh, it has to go through a phase and sales uh, one phase and sale two phase and stuff like that. But we have an open season on Christmas and Easter, I think, also. So yeah, that, everyone can come. That, that's one of the one of the yeah. best things about the yeah. uh, state-run alcohol stores. So they have really strict rules on how to, how they how they're supposed to operate. But there's a kind of a loophole that uh, so you need to sell a certain quantity of beer to be able to be have shelf space basically in in these state-run alcohol stores. But but uh, if you have a seasonal beer. If you have just a beer that basically for one month or, or six weeks or something like that, then you always get access or mostly. So, uh, so everybody. In so, Michael, that's so why we're 96 types of Christmas yes. beers. <laughs> everybody and their grandmother releases, releases a Christmas beer. Yeah, exactly. And this, this is also, this is also their, uh, this is their chance also to, to you know, introduce their, uh, what they're doing. Because uh, they're not going to be able to get in uh, on regular season, so uh, off season. Uh, so uh, this is a time they can they can bring their stuff, and you get to know them. So, for you know, beer enthusiasts, uh, the Christmas is a wonderful time in Iceland. But you know, it might change when we when we, when we open this up because we are going to open this up. But uh, for the small brewers, this is going to be this is always uh, their big opportunity, and uh, we, we we cherish that really. Um, like the Christmas book flood, we have the Christmas beer flood here, so it's a it's yes. a good thing to have. Yeah, it's a very good to read the Christmas book after you drink a few beers, or while or, or not, or uh, either one. I don't know. Um, so yeah, and the next one. I, I just want to mention. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, probably this is kind of like the the brewery in Iceland called Ölgerð Eils Skattlagrimsonar. Can you repeat that quickly? Eyjafjallajökull. Yeah, 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 good. Ölgert Eils Skallagrimsonar. So it's a bit, bit funny. This is named after a famous Viking from the Icelandic sagas called Eil Skallagrimson. And he was probably the worst drunk in Icelandic history. Uh, at the age of three, his father told him, you can't go to this party because you always get too drunk. At the age of seven, he killed his first man. And, you know, as you do. As you do. And uh, so forth and so on. He was always, uh, when he got drunk, he pestered people, he killed people. And uh, it's... Fitting that the biggest brewery in Iceland is named after this. And, 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 he's, and he puked skier all over the king of Norway. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a very, really <laughs> proud moment. Yeah, that's not a history. But that good, good or gold. This is like like the standard lager in Iceland. Um, you know, the first lager that was introduced when we yeah. finally got beer again, 1989. So good is probably the beer that you're most likely to get if you go to a bar in Iceland. Uh, Order one good. That's like our Budweiser, just a little bit better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. and and our humble opinion. Humble opinion. Yeah, humble opinion. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Christmas. Uh, well, beers in, and and general Iceland have been doing quite well. We have uh, the perfect water for uh, the lager beers, at least. Um, you need more minerals in water for the ales. Uh, a different story, but uh, usually we're doing pretty good. And uh, it's and even. Uh, yeah, per capita always, of course, but uh, um, compared to uh, you know Denmark, we uh, used to look up to Denmark because they were drinking just you know two types of beer. They were drinking Carlsberg and Tuborg all day long, and we thought there was something to be proud of. Uh, today we're doing even and you know better selection than they are. 
Uh, so uh, we've we come a long way after, after 1989. I mean, the Berlin Wall fell and beer was released in Iceland, you know, two most important things uh, to remember. Yeah, yeah, in the world history of 1989, yeah. yeah. And regarding those, that, those questions, uh, you know, there are many, many breweries and they all make Christmas beer. So uh, yeah, well, if we answered that pretty much. Yes, yes no yeah. problem. But just want to mention th real quick, uh, there's, a, there's a day called the J Day or when, when this Christmas beer is released. And, and yeah. uh, it's of course a Danish tradition, but uh, it is also pretty... You said, you said J Day. J Day. Not J Day. Yeah, J Day. J Day. J Day. We uh, love that day also. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Uh, so uh, you know, it's a uh, you know every every bar in town opens up uh, open up the Tuborg Julebrug uh, at the same time, and a uh, little bit of festivities are around that time, usually in. What it was it beginning of November or yeah yeah something like that. Uh, actually, yeah, I re re recommend it. I uh, I've been to uh, Oktoberfest and uh, uh, and also to uh, the J Day in Denmark in Copenhagen. And if if you uh, if you <laughs> if you're heading that way during November, try to hit on that day. It's it's uh, it's a it's a rather uh, interesting uh, interesting thing because um, usually um, Christmas beers are more are stronger this is like a whole percent you know stronger than than regular beers so you have all the regular danes that are you know drink their amount of, of Carlsberg and tuborg during the day and then this one day <laughs> they all switch to this one uh so, so you can imagine uh so uh, the beer is flowing down the streets in all kinds of forms uh yes it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty accessible beer uh pretty light you know not too uh too malty. Some people don't like to have the, these. So a pretty easy, easy to drink. A couple of those. It's five point six percent ABV, but still a pretty nice. Uh, then, then when you're a Danish person, you usually drink six or seven, and then you drink six or seven of this at least. Yes, yeah. and then the uh, the beer might come out in different places than usual. Yes, yes. let's <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> no, I'm, so, I'm talking about J Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. J Day. J Day. J Day. Yeah, J Day. Yeah, J -day. And yeah, also uh, one thing, especially around this. Is this life? Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I can uh, sleep anything else? We, we keep going back to this one because uh, this is gonna kind of uh, well, uh, this is gonna be uh, relevant to all Christmas beers. It's a very common thing in Iceland. It's like a, it's like I don't know, like a guest game or something. That people are, oh, it's, it's it's gonna be good this year, or it was bad last year, or it's gonna be even better the next year, or whatever stuff like that. Well. Uh, and I used to laugh at this because I knew it because I, I used to work for these guys for a bit and uh, I knew it wasn't the same recipe but you still you can't be right about this because when you're making Heineken or Budweiser or whatever you're always like uh, monitoring the, the brew you're always testing and monitoring and testing and, and you know you have human testers I was one <laughs> it was a nice job and uh, but this one here this is made for two months right and then it stops for 10 months and then they start again so they can't have continuity so this is the reason uh, there are always going to be a bit of a difference in all christmas beers some christmas beers they they kind of champion too they want to have it a bit different this year and this year and that year they want to you know get the conversation started but even though this is the same recipe it is so you, you you're not completely wrong if you say that you thought this this was better last year maybe you had a bad you know a good tooth and now a bad tooth or something i don't know but there there is a possibility that, that that's true or you just you know you've got too high hungover after after one episode and then all kinds of reasons yes. all kinds of reasons uh, you, you wouldn't you uh, i could go on forever uh, the best beer ever had was uh, at this time of this uh, this sunny place and uh, why uh, it was so tasty were you thirsty uh, yeah was it hot uh, yeah yeah, all right, I understand. So <laughs> that might have been, uh, you know, might have been the reasons. Like all experiences, it depends yeah. on, on the timing, on the, on what you're maybe eating with it, maybe what, uh, what kind uh, of... And whether what, you have your wife or your girlfriend with you, yes, and all so those things. Uh, <laughs> so we're not technically married, but, you know, we're, you know, we have yeah, two boys, it's, so... It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, we will, sorry. We will, we will filter this out. Sorry, Hilda. Uh, so yeah, next next one we have is this is one of those uh, uh, fine new breweries, Reykjavik Brew. As uh, I really like those guys. Yeah. Uh, they are very talented. Um, they are. Uh, they made this uh, uh, beer called Equafate, which means something uh, beautiful. 
Ik kan vatten, het is like a, is the standard text in the Christmas songs. Yeah, it's a Christmas song that yeah. you you will always get something pretty for for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. So so ik kan vatten is that yeah. something pretty, something pretty is it? So and uh, what did I tell you earlier? Different types of beers now in, in the Christmas beer look, uh, you know category, but you know what they do with this one? They want to Christmas is Christmasize it. Christmas as Christmas as I'm gonna have I'm gonna patent that word. Yes. They Christmasize this one with uh, an Icelandic Christmas tree. They put some tree in it. So uh, basically, they put a whole uh, pine tree into the into yeah. the brew. So uh, we don't need this on Christmas. You can yes. you, you just drink. mix it into the beer. Yeah, you can just drink this. And this just is put, in you a, put it into your into your blender, and then you have a Christmas beer. And this is an IPA, which is not usually a very Christmasy thing. But, you know, I paid in India Pale Ale, and this is one of those beers that, that came to life uh, in the American Revolution when the microbrewery started. And, uh, you know, the ugly truth is that the reason this is the most common first beer for microbreweries, it's so hard to fuck up. <laughs> Because actually you put a lot of malt in it, a lot of hops, the, you know, the, uh, the bitter pl flavor, mix it together and make something and you're like, yeah, this is good. And no one wants to admit that it's not. So uh, that's IPA. But uh, this one, let's just give it a check. So actually, uh, I've tried this year's uh, match of Echta Fatlek. This was also available last year. I'm going to show it to you real quick. Reykjavik Brewery. Uh, they have a tap room here in, in Reykjavik, so uh, you could visit that uh, if if you're in town. And uh, unfortunately, they are not exporting a lot, so I'm, I'm not sure that you get it. In... Just come twice. Yeah. When, when, when COVID... You know, right. but uh, so last year uh, I felt like the pine, uh, the bitterness of the pine um, uh, was kind of overwhelming. But it was too much. Yeah. Yes, yes. Just but true. today, this year's, oh, it's, uh, it's actually really good. It's perfect. So it's fruity and and Christmassy and uh... so so they put. Uh, This is yeah, of, yeah, like a pine tree. Uh, they they put basically everything Christmassy into this. They said. Uh, we uh, put a yeah, pine tree, uh, a lot of small cookies, uh, a can of Macintosh, <laughs> which is like a Christmassy thing to have. Qual the quality tree. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a bunch of clementines to, to make it so. So if something is like the spirit of Icelandic Christmas. And don't, it, and don't, the don't forget they, they threw in uh, an elf. Also, but he was really old. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, but I really I like this one. I really do like this one. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, for me, I would I would like this one to go uh, to go Stella on us. I would like to have this all year round. Yeah, it, it's it's one of the best IPAs. Quite uh, good. Yeah. <sighs> I would not maybe drink this with uh, uh, with the Christmas dinner. But after Christmas dinner, perfect. And, uh, and a little bit of a... And before. And before, of course. <laughs> If you're in that mood. <laughs> so what do we have next? Uh, uh, da, 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 you have Thank you, Myrna, for the... Ooh. This is this is this is one time uh, the funniest guy in Iceland. Who? 1999 or something like that. <laughs> 98, okay. Yeah. Been a while, but, you know, still got it. She says she loves the humor. Yes, I was saying that. But yeah, when uh, your previous, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, streams, you, you have not gotten like uh, uh, love the humor. humor. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's why I brought you in. Uh, yeah. So next one, uh, what should we have? Yule Kisi. It's also an IPA. Well, let's, let's get it over. With. But the thing is, I, I like this. I like this. Uh, I like the uh, the can, the Yoli Kisi. We have this, uh, you probably told me about the Christmas cat. The monstrous Christmas cat, yeah. But So, yeah, this is actually the time when the Christmas cat is prowling. So, can I show it? So, Christmas cat, Yoli Kisi by Malpik Brewery. They are situated here in Reykjavik also. Uh, so, if you don't get new clothes during Christmas, the Christmas cat can eat you. So, um, that's why the Icelandic children are really happy about the getting some soft packages, you know, the hard work that uh, the mothers or the grandmothers used to work when they were knitting, or, you know, probably some men, but <laughs> still, uh, they were happy with getting some soft packages. And uh, so uh, the Christmas cat makes sure of that. Icelandic Parenting 101. So, yeah, yeah talking about Icelandic Parenting, uh, the, 
the Christmas, uh, our 13 Santas, yes, we have 13, of course, and their mother is a troll called Grilla. She is very abusive to her husband, and she, all, <laughs> and she also uh, eats children. But uh, the cat only eats children if uh, they don't have new clothes. So don't mix that up together. Yes. Just, just eats children and eats in an old clothes. So yes. you cannot mix it up. And you know, uh, Grilla, the mother of the Santa Claus, is uh, actually Lepalud, the, the current husband, is, is her third <laughs> because he's, she's eaten the, the, the first two. So keep that in mind also. Yes. yes. She's not just fond of children's stew. Also, so me with my uh, malt blend from my kids is, is very mild uh, when it comes to. So yeah, yeah. So this is an IP, IPA by Malbic. But the first uh, thing we uh, see how dark, uh, you know, unfiltered it is. The first thing I notice is that Valor is pouring now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm used to feel. You know, <laughs> I'm generous when I, you know, when I do my beer tours. It, it, it's not just. No, like a small, <laughs> you, you, you okay, get, okay. We you get, get, we, you we get, get the bus. We got it. Oh, it's really sweet too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, either you're in the APA team, uh, APA, APA. <laughs> the APA team. It's, it's like, like a, it's, it's, like, it's a, like a monkey. It's, <laughs> a, it's like a basket with with a bowl with pineapple. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, the IPAs, either you like them or not. I mean, because uh, beer taste is pretty much made out of two uh, different types of taste. This is the sweetness of the malt, the liquor, uh, the alcohol, the foam, and the color. And then we have the bitterness of the hops, which is the, it's just, it's, it's like a, a dried herb. It's really, you know, it's related to cannabis. It's not that though. Uh, and uh, you mix those two things together, then you get sweet and bitter drink. So Christmas, so beers in, in general, are the only drinks that are both sweet and bitter at the same time that's that's the beauty of it that's why it's so wonderful but the ipas they have a bit more of hops in it so it, they are more bitter and uh it's, it might be an acquired taste like some other things but you know this is very good and it's, it's cloudy it's a lot i mean a lot of stuff in it and yeah. Yeah, that's actually good i feel like you know I, I, that's also part of the christmas beer tradition of looking at the of, of the containers how they how they uh, of the artwork i feel like they sh could have done a little bit you know reiko brewery does it excellent like they are mixing to uh, together the uh, the spirit of christmas into the uh, into the ingredients part so they are telling a little bit of a christmas story but here is just malt big wheat uh, hops and yeast that's the story. And then you, okay. when you pour it, you might think you're drinking cat piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> it's, it's got the cat on front. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, okay. but it, it, I, I doesn't, guess, it doesn't I get taste. where you're going with it. Yes, I don't, yes, it doesn't taste like cat piss. So Joanne is asking about what we think about UK beers. So what's uh, what do you say about that? The UK beers? Yes. Uh, how many hours do we have? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, last I checked, uh, Brewdog was a part of the UK. Uh, uh, so I like them a lot. Uh, they're like uh, you know, micro brews for the for the public or whatever for the masses or whatever they do. Um, the UK, uh, uh, their tradition is, uh, is, is. I hope I, I hope they will get back on track actually because their wonderful ale traditions uh, have been uh, going down a bit. Uh, when you have the pumped up ales, which I really love, um, and then we see that a light. Uh, even you know, uh, you know, Carlings and, and the Stellas and stuff are, are, are really big sellers in Iceland, in England, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that was the trend, and now we are seeing a better selection, like all over Europe. And uh, thanks to the younger people, because they are just they are discovering newer things. Um, so uh, wonderful, wonderful beers in, in, in the UK. Really. Yeah, but. Uh, to be honest, I, I felt like when traveling to, to we, we frequent to go to, we are big Liverpool football club fans and go there frequently. And, uh, and, I, and I, you know, there was a little bit of a, uh, the selection could be better sometimes. Uh, you know, you could, uh, if you want, wanted an IPA, you could go for an IPA, but uh, sometimes there was just like the state lager and it was just like piss. Sorry. 
I mean, it's, you know, the calling and the Stella, and, and maybe uh, the reason we have been drinking Stella in, in the UK is because the calling is like three percent, and 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 you you, you can bathe your dog in it and or something. But yeah, it's 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 hardly uh, it's hardly a beer that that you're not gonna go. Oh yeah, it's a great beer unless you you're like you know when you won a game like we usually do, <laughs> uh, then you know it's, these, it's, days, <laughs> these days, these days, these days. Oh. So uh, yeah, so that's gonna be it's gonna be good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love I love my Guinness, for example. Uh, I can always go for a Guinness, uh, but uh, there are not many my uh, breweries that pop into mind like for for real quality. If I if I think about the UK, to be honest, sorry. But they uh, they they have a few. maybe now maybe now yeah. they have a yeah um, yeah. Well, talk about decent beers. Um, <clears throat> uh, this one. Yes. Should we should try this one? Yeah, I'm ex actually excited to try this one. This is 8.5. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's get so get, I get so that gets us there. So I pasture. So so I I might pour this one. This is the only one of these I haven't I haven't tried. Uh, this so, is so, a triple. Yeah. So this is a pretty new microbrewery called Berg. Um, show you the can over here called uh, the bird of Christmas and uh, a Belgian triple and they have done a couple of uh, I think maybe six beers or something like that that have been available in that it's already poured yeah yeah, yeah. But <laughs> always wanting more uh, so uh, so Valerie can you tell me about the uh, the triple uh, tradition in Belgium uh, not much, no. but but, uh, but, of but course. I can. Uh, hey, uh, so uh, thank you <laughs> for putting me in the spotlight. But uh, so oh, this, so they have what they have as uh, the, the, these uh, seven original monasteries that make the uh, the monastery beers in, in, in Belgium, and uh, they came up with ways to make a stronger beers, and so they made the versions. It was single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple. So it means like uh, yeah, one yeah, one two three four. Uh, so uh, the higher the number, the higher the alcohol content. And basically, what they were doing, they were saving their lives because uh, someone wrote a holy text that some other guy read and and and, and said that uh, they had to fast, do some fasting. That meaning that uh, for a few weeks they had no no solid food. So this is what drove them to the monks to make stronger beers. And strong means more nourishment, it, more malt in it, more stuff in it. So uh, they could survive, and they got so good at it, the Belgians, that they were looking forward to the fast. Yeah, and basically, you know, they are basically doubling the the, the recipe or tripling it or or quadrupling. Yeah. So the malt. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so these are strong usually. Of course, this is eight point five. The quadruples can go over ten, but. What's what's amazing with these uh, these Belgian beers, and this is why we talk about Belgium uh, and and Germany, uh, you know, those two countries being the makers of beer. These are so mild, though. It is eight point five, and it still is uh, is mild. It's not you, you don't feel the alcohol at all. Not at all. It's a, it's a pretty balanced beer. I'm I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, they say uh, like an extra day off, no family gatherings. Delicious leftovers and a nice, cozy Belgium triple. Well, so, um, I'm not gonna agree uh, because uh, for me, this is it's a it's a it's a big task to try to make a Belgium triple when you have real Belgian triples to to uh, taste against it. So um, I'm not for, for, for if uh, you know, most of the Belgians I've tried as uh, they are they are a bit better. This is a different. Uh, what what I do like though is they are doing something different. There, this there's no Belgian triple in the Christmas selections, so they are trying, and uh, who knows if they continue with it, it could get you know even better next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a very very tricky style to to do, and uh, they've done a decent job. But it's not the greatest triple, but you know it's okay. Skull, well, skull. Well done, guys. So yeah. So, uh, for a very, very, very good reason now, Alert, uh, we're going to talk about uh, something completely different, like our friends Monty Python used to. Uh, this is Frodo's Lakehead. 
These beers, uh, is, we have a, a microbrewery called Borg, which is um, a part of Ölgerin, uh, the biggest one. And they have been the kind of the leaders of, of, uh, of my, or the micro revolution in Iceland. But they, uh, uh, you know, they have a you know, good backing up of, you know, regarding marketing and distribu distribution and all that. So, so uh, they, they are independent, but still under, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. under the control of the big brewery, the biggest brewery of Iceland. So they have the support needed to... to yeah, yeah. So like, like you would put a great uh, talent of guys in a microbrewery and put it inside Budweiser. Mm -hmm. And they can do whatever they want. And uh, then they have Budweiser to help them. So, and this is a uh, is wonderful for us that that uh, you know enjoy beers because they made a, a lot of uh, great beers during the years. This is probably the beer that you're mo uh, you know uh, after Einstuck. The uh, this is probably the beer that you're most likely to get, you know, where you are at uh, from Borg Brewery. Yeah, so. uh, they, ha they they have this uh, distinct uh, uh, you know kind of look of the letters and this is number eighty two. So this uh, you know the eighty second beer they made. What is uh, astonishing with this beer is this is an IPA, India Pale Ale, and it has no alcohol in it. No alcohol at all. And uh, it is uh, amazing, I think, because uh, for me, this is like the, one of the trickiest things you can do in brewing is make something good and it's not strong at the same time. That's, that's really hard to do because you're going to need the, you know, the fulfillment, you're going to need the, you know, you know, the roundness and everything is because when we have tried like a 0% Stella or 0% Heineken, it's always going to, it's like, it's like watery beer. Mm -hmm. But now they are doing this with ales and the ales give more taste. They give, uh, you know, it more body, more spices. So the outcome is, is, it's pretty astounding. I'm gonna put this in this glass. How do you think about yeah, that? It's it's zero percent. So yeah, yeah just put it. I'm not I'm not a big fan of zero percent beers, <laughs> but, but uh, you know I'm willing to try everything once. Yes. Uh, so cheers. Scott. So there's a lot of hoppiness. The citra hops and IPA hops. It just smells like an IPA, regular IPA. Then you taste it. You don't have the sweetness, but you have everything else. So you, you it's like you have have the opportunity to have a non-alcoholic beer, but also with a lot of flavors and, and you know a lot of charisma. So this is a this is a kind of a you know kind of a you know uh, uh, you know it's a, it's a change in time. It's, it's something different. Now we have a, these also made a, another one before this called Brio, which is even better. So now. Uh, we have a selection of non-alcohol beer that are that are uh, Lekir by B Borg Brewery, so basically foam liquor. So uh, it's some it's some of the Christmas beers, of course, have a Christmas uh, connection. So foam liquor. So they are making another one. It's not enough for us to have thirteen Santas. We need to have more. So now we have foam liquor, not pot liquor or, or we have ash liquor, liquor, of course. Ash liquor. <laughs> 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 Thank you for reminding me of that. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so a lot of the uh, I, uh, Christmas beers are, are, they are trying to name them after some of our Christmas traditions, of course. So uh, this is a possibility. And we also, we are seeing this uh, more and more of, um, you know, believe you me, um, uh, I like beer of the, uh, because of the taste. Uh, maybe he doesn't, but uh, you know, I like the taste of beer. So m sometimes I might want to visit Valor and watch the game. Uh, driving my car and uh, you know uh, bring a few non-alcoholics with me and uh, I'm still gonna because you know the studies show that uh, one of the best things that, that that men can do is meet their mates in the pub and drink beer and uh, then so, so this is the placebo effect yes, yes. but yeah <laughs> but the thing is that uh, it's about uh, the togetherness and your pals and maybe the act of drinking rather than the alcohol content of the beer that makes you uh, a better Better man, better person. Like I said, he's the doctor. I'm just, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so, do you have any questions about the Christmas beers of Iceland? Any, any, any thoughts Be before we uh, get the two best ones out? Don't rush. It's okay. We are, we are pretty relaxed. Uh, especially me. <laughs> Getting there. Yeah, and it's, it's almost one hour now. So we. Uh, Maybe we will just go ahead. Uh, this is uh, next one is uh, is the Einstuck. We talked about Einstuck, uh, 
Uh, Valor has mentioned it a few times. It's a great brewery. And this is uh, a double bot from, from, from Einstock. A double bot is uh, originated in Germany. Um, you know, Bock is a type of beer made in uh, an area called Back. It's pronounced Bock in South Germany, and Bock also means a goat. So this is German humor for you. So a uh, double, <laughs> double Bock is... It is zwei Bock, yeah, double goat. Uh, <laughs> double goat, double goat. Double goat, or double Bock, yeah. Uh, well, so the, that's the funniest thing. This is the reason there are not a lot of uh, German comedies out there. They make, you know, good, you know, movies and stuff, but... And, and and music, but not comedies. So this is a double bock, and mainly this is like a double version of uh, need a glass. Yes, sorry. Yes. So I, I'm I'm always thinking about uh, how to get rid of these uh, spammers. So uh, I'm looking into options for that. Sorry for the interruptions, but of course don't click on any links. They are just uh, trying to scam you to. Uh, to get you to click so yeah just uh, ignore them and uh, enjoy yes so yeah Einstock Einstock double buck this is uh, like one of my top three five Christmas beers of Iceland I really like these because uh, when these came out there was uh, this double buck and another one uh, called Bolle they came out um, like seven years ago or something and in all tests they were numbered one and two together these two because uh this is for uh, you know for malt enthusiasts and you know and this this kind of taps into everything it taps into the old uh, two tradition and it taps into christmas too so it's it's very christmasy skull skull it's got it's got like uh, caramel it's got toffee brown sugar and but still is fresh it's uh Double block is, 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 is a really, really, uh, really nice one. And this, uh, it, it, it's pretty easy to actually, like, you have a couple of these. Uh, some of these multi beers, you can only have one bottle and then you're, you know, you're fed up or you haven't had enough. But this is actually, you can drink a couple of those uh, and uh, enjoy. So keep that in mind. Yeah, well, this is kind of a formula also. If you, when you like, uh, when talking about easy drinking and hard drinking, um, after about three or four beers, everything else becomes easy drinking. <laughs> yes. Well, well. Uh, then uh, uh, one of my uh, all-time favorites. Also, uh, the next one. This is this is like uh, this is candy in a bottle, really. This is Kalti. Kalti is a is the first brewery after the two big ones. We had the Viking and Olga, and uh, this one came in one of the first like small brewery or micro brewery, and it, it it was founded in 2006. That's one year before Brewdog and Mikkeler, so it's it's kind of amazing. So after the uh, beer revolution in in America, like around 2000, it spread over Europe, and uh, we got our first uh, micro brewery in Iceland called Kalte to the north. And you can actually go for a beer spa. You can also soak in their beer. It's a fun experience. I would recommend that. Uh, uh, so if you, when, when you're able to travel again, uh, you can go for a beer spa of the Kalde Brewery to the north. It's close to the capital of the north called Akureyri. And, uh, capital. So, yeah. <laughs> and if you're, if you're going for the, it's, it's called the uh, Diamond Ring, or there's a really beautiful couple of things to visit there. You know, we have the Golden Circle here in the south and, and the Diamond Ring. To the north and if you if you have the opportunity when it may be done golden circle and have done the south part you can go to the east and north and, and experience Kalde brewery and then go to western islands of course our hometown yes and uh unmissable uh yes these guys uh they they started in 2006 and um it was it's, it's, you know so many amazing stories reg uh, regarding uh uh, these guys, because it, it, these are a husband and wife that uh, wanted to do something else. I think, uh, uh, I think the husband, you know, he was a sailor. He, he was a sailor, yeah. he, you know, and he wanted to, you know, uh, do something else. And they decided to to uh, open up a brewery. Usually, that is not a good idea. We have <laughs> we have an example uh, called Steady in Iceland. Uh, it's not a good way to start a brewery. Usually, usually you have uh, uh, usually you have uh, enthusiasts that are very good brew makers. And then they uh, evolve and they get bigger and uh, you know they're higher somewhere or whatever. But these guys, they they wanted to make 
beer. And what they uh, decided to do, the first one they made was uh, Czech lager. They wanted to make a Czech lagers. And the, you know, the Czech, of course, drink more, are the biggest beer drinkers in the world. Uh, bigger than Germany and in Ireland. Not combined, but bigger. They are the number one, if, if you didn't know. So what in, they did... In, 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 uh, in communist Europe, uh, it was kind of like the, to pacify the crowds. Uh, <laughs> you, you would get cheap beer. That was... Uh, That's one of those things. Yeah. One of those things, you could yeah. always get cheap beer in, in North and, and Eastern Europe. And Czechoslovakia was a, a, a big example of that. You could get cheap beer. Yeah, you were... Of course, into, uh, under communist rule, but if you get cheap beer, then you will. Yeah, everything yeah, is going to be yeah, all right. everything okay. Uh, I'm going to use the Icelandic term tatarettas. Tatarettas. Yeah, because uh, every other person uh, in uh, the Czech Republic uh, knows how to brew lager beers. So they had to call maybe once or twice to uh, the country, and uh, a brewer answered and uh, came up to, uh, to Iceland, and uh, they started making uh, Czech beers. But just a regular uh, Czech lager beer to begin with, and uh, th th then was there. Uh, winning formula because they made a beer that was bought in bulk uh, in, in large quantities. And this may be, you know, what, what uh, is the biggest challenge for microbreweries is when they want to make exotic beers and different beers, which of all, you know, which we like, they also have to make something that people are going to buy in more quantity. Mm -hmm. And for instance, in the Christmas uh, beer tradition in Iceland, it's like uh, we choose our brew or our, uh, the usage beer we buy in cases or six packs. And by far, the Tubok Julebrook is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. So it's a race for the second place. And uh, so we buy that, maybe uh, two or three six packs or whatever. And then we go and buy one and one and one of those beers we've been tasting. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's, that's the, uh, uh, you know, that's a very common thing in Iceland. So a, a big part of Christmas traditions for, more, for beer lovers at least is that you, you would sample maybe 15 <laughs> Christmas beers or 20 or, and you would drink them slowly during the uh, holidays. And yes, if, if Valor is pouring, maybe six, uh, but if I'm pouring, maybe four. So, uh, Jola Kaldi, uh, you can do the pouring now, and you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to stand up from this live stream, and I'm going to get some ginger snaps, paper cuckoo. Tapica? Tapica? Yeah, from Sweden. So, a lot of our Christmas traditions, of course, uh, come from the Nordic countries. We are close to them. Denmark was, we were of course a colony of, of Denmark for, for centuries. And uh, so some of the Christmas tradition come from there and um, some from, yeah. I don't know where the ginger snaps come originally from, but, uh, uh, but uh, these are great. So, yeah. Something very, very traditional to have. So, so, so this is, uh, uh, this is a porter. This is a uh, porter and stout, by the way, is basically the same thing. But the, the porter is dark ale, um, and uh, you know, probably discovered in, in London, where they uh, took you know leftover malt and roasted it like coffee. Uh, so uh, and then they tried to brew something out of it, and, and you know, porter came out. Porters are also excellent for making stronger beers, uh, because they uh, they tend to do the alcohol flavor. They kind of press that down. And this one has something added. This is not right in the book, the Germans, with the, uh, with the rules. Uh, this is, they have coffee, chocolate, all kinds of stuff. And it's, everything is allowed on Christmas. Mm -hmm. Personally, I like the uh, right in book, because, you know, malt, hops, and water fermented together, because those are the best beers in the world. Usually all the best beers are just made by these ingredients. On Christmas, everything goes. Let's just put, put whatever we want. And the Christmas dog! Uh, she hey. wanted to say hi to you guys. Yeah. She's been sniffing around us for yes, some minutes. This is Pearl, Petla. Say hi. Yes. She's looking for the Christmas cat. <laughs> so this is a, uh, there's also a, a bar here called Calde Bar. So uh, you can also visit that if you have the opportunity. Oh, they so always have a selection of, of these. Kaldi beers. Oh, I can't wait any longer. Skull. 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 You need to mm. look each other in the eyes when you say skull. Oh, this is this is a symphony. Oh, she wants the ginger snaps. <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite good. Uh, a little bit of coffee taste. Uh, chocolate. Dark chocolate. 
Right. Uh, this is this is uh, the reason I brought the ginger snaps because uh, I'm into uh, food and beer pairing um, at the uh, Santa Sweden in, in, in Reykjavik. It's, it's in, Ice, in Icelandic, but you know, eleven beers and eleven uh, uh, eleven you know dishes of food, including you know um, uh, lamb and lobster and uh, beef. You name it. It's wonderful. So I'm into pairing, and uh, so many surprising things can happen. For instance, this together is, is amazing. It's a just sweet, regular ginger snaps. We call it paprika or paper cooker. Look around. Explodes in your mouth. It's unreal. It's so good. I could do yeah. this all day. <laughs> yeah, the mix is quite beautiful, actually. Surprising, too. You don't like you know, sweet biscuit and, and beer? Nah, that's not going to work. It does. Yeah, and actually, um, so Kalti is, uh, if I go for some, um, like a, maybe a case of this uh, with, with something else, Kalti is a pretty decent, always solid, good beer, easily drinkable. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Kalti Dark Lager is, uh, I would say, my uh, you know favorite go-to beer. And uh, you know it, it, it's a shame that that Kalti Bar is, is kind of popular. Uh, kind of popular. It's, yes, it's, it's very hard to get in. <laughs> I think the uh, the only time in this century I, I I've used the, the don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> it was in, when I was trying to get into a into a Kalti Bar. I, I taught you at beer school, people. Hello. I, I, I've been to beer school for you know. Uh, uh, a few weeks before, I, I taught you. I made you laugh. Let me in. It did not work. Uh, so you have to be there at noon or something. But it's uh, it's 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 uh, kind it, of worth it. It's it's a small bar, and uh, so yeah, it gets filled up quick, pretty easily. I used the moniker, and I don't you know who I was? But he uh, he's still current. So <laughs> well, kind of. Well. Oh, this is a perfect beer to uh, end the tasting. Yeah, perfect. So guys, uh, I see these spammers have been a little bit bugging us, but uh, we are still figuring that out. But don't mention that. So uh, any questions about Icelandic beer? Uh, we do a Reykjavik beer tour here for your friend in Reykjavik. So if you are in, uh, when you're able to travel again, uh, uh, we are able to take you for a, a sipping of 10 uh, micro brews and uh, visiting three pubs that we like here in, in downtown Reykjavik and uh, and Sven does online beer tours so if, if you want to if you want to know more about beer in general or, or Icelandic beer that that could be an option also and uh, yeah we just yeah, yeah, I might, might come along with you this summer where the people come I might you know yeah tag along and have some fun with you guys and uh, yeah, as you said, we we like to have fun with this. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll schedule a, a, a food and beer pairing. That would be maybe fun for you. Try out some Iceland traditional food and 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 the beers that uh, come with it. Uh, or, yeah. or if you can find someone that knows stuff about that. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So uh, I'm gonna check the comments. It's a little bit hard to read here. I can see that. Uh, uh, Lisa asked, why would the 10 month gap change the flavor of the Julebrick Tuborg? I actually agree with you, Lisa. I think the beer stays pretty much the same. I think it's all in the nose of the people that are <laughs> saying that, yeah, the last beer's uh, last uh, batch was better, last uh, year's batch of. of but I, can, I can answer that, though, if, uh, you know, yep. if, because. Uh, because when you're doing regular beers, and then uh, you can monitor the flavors really closely, and you have also people doing that, uh, you cannot compare the last brew, brew like 10 months before. You cannot taste that together because uh, beer is a fresh product. So you cannot like, does this match this one? You can't. So mm. they might, there is a possibility. Uh, there is, a, you know, so it's a difference. In the taste it's just a you know scientific fact 
uh, Susan was saying that next time we should send you some tastings along with you. Uh, that's actually an idea that I have in the back, back of my mind. I have to check into the logistics of that, how, how that works, how shipping would uh, do, because I, I, it would be fun to send you like a crate of Icelandic beers and and then we would just uh, have a scheduled event and we'll show up and, and, and open up the beers and one, one by one and, and maybe pair them with something. Or, well, you know. actually, uh, I, I've done this in, uh, in my beer school and, and I've done this from this studio here. I've done uh, Serbia, the UK and America. And what we did was we pretty much just decided on themes of beer. So we had a white ale and a pale ale and just something that was similar. So we could talk about the different styles of beer. So that's that's one option. We might uh, do that. Okay, so 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 you were, you had uh, so so people got their own beers, just similar yeah. beers. That yeah, so okay. we, we had yeah. the beers here and then I tried to have them, uh, you know, uh, you know, variable beers so uh, I, I helped them also I, I got some links uh, look at the selections so I helped them find uh, what would be more uh, most fitting because it was mostly about learning about beer different types so there was a brown ale a pale ale a light yeah light, yeah a dark of course lager. of course they're like the yeah, ba yeah. Ba like a basic beer tour. yeah yeah the basic beer tour. so okay. uh, that, that worked okay that's an idea Susan let's let's check that out um, Waltrot says, nice Christmas pullover. Yes, thank you. Gift my, for my wife, girlfriend, or her, you know, mixed. Either one. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Alex said, tried the white uh, Instuk white ale. Uh, delicious, yes, it is It is quite good. Uh, I recommend Alex to put uh, put it in a glass and put a, a little bit of slice of, of orange into it. Let it, you know, just for two minutes, just uh, gives it a, it, it, it's already citrusy, but it, flavors it up a little bit so I always do that on my beer tour so I recommend that for you and I pair them uh, with lobster actually lobsters yes. yes perfect for lobsters uh, usually when when we're grilling lobsters for example lobster tails uh, you would put, put a little bit of garlic a little bit of a, a citron or a, a lemon <laughs> and butter <laughs> and butter of course Icelandic butter creamy butter so this is a perfect uh, it's a perfect pairing it's a wonderful pairing I recommend it it's one of my biggest hits uh, with uh, my seminar uh, he, Heather asked, did Enstuk make a Christmas offering? Yes, this is, uh, this is the Christmas offering, uh, Enstuk Doppelbach. And then they also have a limited edition uh, winter ale. So uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, as I said, they are in at least 26 states uh, in the United States and, uh, and most countries in Europe. So uh, that's the most likely beer that you can get, uh, get abroad, Icelandic beer. Uh, Manuel asked, do you have a favorite German beer? What do you say about that? Uh, I do like the, the Dunkels uh, in, in, in Bavaria, uh, uh, Dunkelweiss. There's, uh, there's like a white, uh, white hail beer with a, and we have the dark malt instead of light malt. So uh, Dunkelweiss uh, is, is one of my favorites. It's really, really nice. Keep in mind that some people think that uh, if they are darker beers, that they are stronger. Some people think that Guinness is a, like a loaf of bread or, or some idea like that. But the only difference is that they roast the malt. So that's the coloring. It's, uh, Guinness is actually the lightest beer that you can get, like 4.2% uh, yeah, or something yeah, like that, yeah. and low in calories. So if, if, if we were showing you here the light Christmas beer over here. Uh, Guinness is actually a better option if you're if you're thinking about calorie-wise beer than that. One of the lightest beers there. Yeah. yeah. So so keep in mind that be dark beers are not heavier. Uh, it depends on how they're made. I mean the triple we had, uh, the, the Belgian triple we had, it, yep. it was a light colored beer. It was the heaviest beer by far. Yeah. And it was light. It was not reddish. It was just light. So yeah. Laura asked, any favorite Can Canadian beers? Can you think about any Canadian beers? Yeah, the, the Stella. They made it in Can Canada first. Yeah, but Stella is a Belgian. Yeah, I know, of course. Uh, so, so. I, think, I, think, I think it doesn't count. It doesn't count? Uh, then I plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are not... Uh, 
Just because I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 we, we have to travel to Canada. Maybe we'll do this a traveling show. Let's try out different beers in different countries. I'm not driving. I know. <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe, who knows? Uh, you know, uh, one of the fun things about the time that we are living today is that everyone is, uh, is their own news or, or, or their own... Uh, broadcasting agency so we are just making a tv show just two dick guys in, in iceland and um, and several of you watching so it's it's a fun uh i work at a brewery here called brewery brewery vivant amanda said vivant brewery vivant have not tried that um uh, bop, 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 speaking awesome. white ale speaking mild speaking german mandarin beer jam you should try it out just a little bit it's a little bit citrusy uh she was it's not mandarin if you think about chinese it's a, not a mandarin language it's a no, it's, it's a clementine, clementine. It? it's a, it's an orange it's been, we yes, call it mandarin lem, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah maybe <laughs> oh mandarin beer <laughs> <laughs> maybe <It's> clementine beer <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was a misunderstanding maybe 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 you're making it a misunderstanding maybe i'm, I'm sure. making it yes um i have done so before yeah so guys uh yeah i think we have covered most of <laughs> most of the most of the questions here yeah, i love you too man <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm just gonna say skull it's been ha fun having you guys uh if you're watching it uh, later just uh, open up a beer and uh, enjoy skull from Reykjavik iceland I will see you on the New Year's Eve uh, live stream. I'm going to show you the fireworks show that is crazy here uh, and probably will be berserk now because everybody is in COVID situation and you, you can't basically go to go to a party like uh, usually on, uh, on New Year's Eve. So I think everybody and their grandmother is going to be shooting up fireworks. Are you going to be shooting up a lot? Uh, I'm just going to be drinking. Yes. And then on the 9th of January, I'm going to tell you about our our uh, traditions of, of saying goodbye to Christmas. Uh, we have this uh, gathering on the 6th of January, usually around that time. Or, Thretantin. 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 We're going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, the last Santa of Iceland, 13 of them. Uh, he leaves on the 6th of January. And uh, there's a tradition like in, in the Westman Islands, where we are both from, and more places uh, that uh, they are you know the dimensions of elves and trolls and santas and people are, are kind of like not there so uh, there's a uh, bonfires fireworks and, and all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff i'm going to tell you about more about that those traditions on the 9th of january i'll probably do something more and we'll think about this maybe if we could do some kind of like a shipment of beers to you or or, or recommendations for beers and have a uh, just a regular beer tour just talking about the different styles of beer I think you'll enjoy two crazy Icelanders or one uh, doing some th something like that. But until then, skál, uh, gleði ljól. Gleði ljól. And uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Skál. Skál. Well, that was fun. Yes. But now we need to end the video. Why? Not sure why. Bye. Uh, <laughs> this was such a cool end.